Okay, hi, so to continue our lecture, so now let's do 8.2 equilibrium of a uniform rigid body. Okay, so uh, we've learned in our previous video, okay, there's a relationship between the linear motion to the rotational motion. So I'm going to state this very early that torque, okay, torque which is defined as tau here, it's analogous, okay, analogous means that it's similar to force, okay, force, so the torque is analogous to the force, so let's see the definition of torque, so what's the definition, it's a tendency of a force to rotate an object, or, so there's three definitions, or the turning effect produced by force, so you can write it as a tendency of a force to rotate an object, about an axis or the turning effect produced by force or this is my favorite lah, favorite definition it's the cross product between the distance r and the force f okay so this is my favorite definition there's three definitions you can use but actually the third one's the best definition is the cross product between distance r and force f so here as you can see in our example okay you have here a man which is uh, trying to tighten the uh, the screw like here so uh, he is moving uh, with a force F here and also distance from the point of the screw which is we will, we will call this uh, we will call this point the pi the pivot point and the distance from the pivot point to the hand is R so you want to find the torque which is the tendency to rotate okay tendency object to rotate it's the force cross with the r which is the distance of a force to the uh to the screw here okay so how do we elaborate this so we have learned in chapter one the cross product if you were to have the cross product tau equals to r cross f it's f r sine theta okay it's different from the dot product which you learned in chapter five work so the dot product is a cos whereas the the cross product is a is a sine okay keep that in mind so we have here torque okay torque f is the force applied r is the distance from the point of rotation to the point where the force is applied which i stated before and you have theta here which is the angle between the force and the r lah okay the distance from the point of rotation so the point of rotation the other uh, thing that i said here instead of calling it the point of rotation we call it as a pivot point so a quick way to imagine this if is you imagine a door okay if you push the door forward you would always push it further from the pivot point okay the part if you, you try to push a door okay opposite to the doorknob you can't push the door because it's near the pivot point so basically the pivot point is the point where uh, you push the force it can't move okay it cannot move all right so from here you have force f here and r so the the angle between force and r is what we call the angle theta okay and the si unit is in newton meter because you have force and r meter and it's a vector quantity means that it has direction also magnitude okay an important thing to note here is the direction okay if it's okay if it's moving if the tau is if the torque is moving anti-clockwise it's positive if the torque is moving clockwise it's negative so how do we determine this okay how do we determine this okay so you see here see you have force here okay it would usually move towards the direction of the pivot point so as you can see here we have a force here it usually moves to the direction of the pivot which is the shortest direction okay shortest direction so it moves here because it is shorter okay it does not okay it does not move here because that would take longer for the force to move pivot so the force would move towards the pivot point in the shortest direction so it would move here in n anti-clockwise direction so when it's anti-clockwise so the torque is positive all right okay so you have you have there lah. okay positive torque and negative torque so positive it's if it's anti-clockwise uh negative if it's clockwise right 
So the next part we're going to learn is the static equilibrium of a uniform rigid body. So why do we study this? We study this because we want to analyze again we want to analyze rotational motion okay so to analyze to better anal analyze the rotational motion you need the body to be in a state of equilibrium okay for the body to be in a state of equilibrium there's two condition okay there's two condition that you need to achieve okay there's two condition that you need to achieve the first condition for it to achieve is the submission of the force acting on the body is zero submission of f equals to zero and since it's a net force you have x component and the y component okay so we will learn in the next slide there's so many there's quite a lot of forces involved like, in this chapter okay but i'll show it uh, a bit because uh, for problem solving you'll do that inside your tutorial okay so for the second part the second condition for equilibrium okay is the submission of a torque equals zero why do we want submission of a torque equals zero? Again, because we want to achieve equ rotational equilibrium. So, to achieve rotational equilibrium, we must assume that the submission of the torque equals to zero. Okay, so here are the problem solving strategies. Again, this will be explained in more details inside your tutorial class, but I will give a few pointers lah, on how do you do, how do you solve problems in uh, equilibrium of rigid body. So as you can see, okay, as you can see in your right hand side here, you have uh, people here, can you mind that? Let's see here, okay, this is a good example of equilibrium of a rigid body. Usually here, they want you to find basically the uh, uh, unknowns here, lah, okay, basically they want you to find uh, probably the mass or the length or things like that. Lah. So as you can see here, we have a person standing on a ladder. All right. So here, there's two things that you need to know at point here and point here. Okay, at one, at the point N and the point N. So you can choose which point you want to be as the pivot. So again, I would state that the pivot is the point where the thing does not move. So usually, logically, when you stand on a ladder, the pivot point would be this point. Okay. So again, from this point, you would have a normal force moving upwards. A frictional force moving to the right because the ladder should move a bit to the, to the left then from this person it must have mass since it's a person so it has weight moving downwards and you have a normal force pushing upwards to the left so since we're dealing with forces you need to draw the free body diagram okay since we're dealing with forces okay then what you need to do is you need to pick a point of rotational point. So again, uh, it's called rotational point, but uh, in this lecture, I will call it as a pipe point. Okay, you can choose the point here and here any point. But again, I would suggest you choose the point where the the thing does not move much, which is this point, lah. All right, does not. Okay, choose. Okay, another tip here, which you uh, which you can do is you choose a point where the most unknown force passes through the rotational axis. Okay, so it means that. Let's say if you were to choose this point, means that you have around uh, one or uh, one forces or basically two, but from here you can post uh, again have one, two, or probably three forces. So again, this is the ideal point. So apply our condition for equilibrium uh, from our last slide. Okay, so summation of torque equals to zero, since we know that torque equals to force F cross R, which is F R. Uh, which is okay let me write that down which is uh oh okay sorry which is f r sine okay sine theta okay you need to note that the force okay depends on how many forces are involved so from here you can see there's one two three and four so probably there's plus f two r sine theta okay what's the r here again it's the distance of the force okay let's say i let's say the force is mg okay mg okay mg here okay mg here is the distance from the force here to the pivot point okay that's r okay <clears throat> and again it must move to 
the shortest distance so it would move mg is downward should move over there okay so it's an anti clockwise so it's a clockwise right so a clockwise this should be negative okay because weight is downward here again it should move towards the pivot okay so weight is here mg okay mg so it should move towards the pivot point there so moving creating a clockwise right so this one is negative negative so a thing you need to know even though it's submission we know that submission is a plus right but it depends on the uh, rotation of the torque again if it's in the clockwise it's negative if it's anti-clockwise it's a positive so bear that in mind right so and again it depends on how many forces how many okay sorry how many forces are involved so probably plus n r sine theta etc lah. so i won't do much more since there's no question here but you should explore this lah inside your tutorial okay next you choose a convenient x and y axis to resolve the problem because as you can see here there's uh sometimes there's angle involved so and uh, okay pause pause i'm oh, sorry pause on the angle as you can see here you have a normal moving outwards the frictional moving right you have a weight moving downwards normal moving to the left so you have x and y components so you need to resolve that into x and y component and then you apply submission of f equals to submission of fx equals to zero submission of fy equals zero you can have the value of the force or the mass or depend on what the question asks and you solve equation in three three and five to determine the unknown again the unknown can be anything from mass to length depends on the type of question okay so that's all for now in the next video i would like to introduce you to rotational dynamics okay hope you enjoy